All right, guys, Jose Otto, doggone it. I mean, I... Okay, you got to understand this with Marab, okay? When you're breaking guys down, like, let's say we're talking about Jose Otto, real clear. One of the master stand-up fighters ever with incredible takedown defense. Whoever your favorite wrestler is, and most people will say the greatest was George St. Pierre, in all fairness, because of, of his offense and he could take everybody down. What George was offensively to wrestling is what Jose is defensively to wrestling. Chad Mendes, who was the best wrestler that the featherweight division seen, changed elevation and shot on Jose Aldo. Jose did not move. He bumped his hips in and sent Chad backwards. I'll never forget that moment. I couldn't believe it. So this is what Jose is. Just by example, what is Marab? Marab's chaos. Marab is a competitor. Marab is on your face. Marab is not going to go away. Marab's a pain in the ass is what he is. He also seems to be a genuinely kind person. Now, before we break down the X's and the O's, I must tell you, people are already debating the second round. The people that are debating it in fairness, they're wrong. This is very clear. Jose lost that round. And I'll, I'll give you a fine example that you may recall. But it was Blahal Mohammed versus Damian Maia. Now, those guys did it for 15 minutes. They did it for three rounds. But you had Blahal Mohammed pressuring Maya, looking for a takedown. He did not succeed. He did not get Maya down, but he was the one attempting it. And Damian Maya is on the defense. When that ends, as impressive as Damian's defense was, he loses the round. Not only due to aggression, there was no damage. You turned to octagon control. And I just bring you that example because it's a big fight. It's one that I think a lot of you are going to remember. But it also proves the point. I realized the announcers were talking about Jose's defense, and it was impressive. Jose's doing the yawn. He's acting like he's bored. But he wasn't doing the Travis Brown elbows. He wasn't doing the Chris Lieben foot stomps. He wasn't doing the Josh Barnett knees. He was standing there defensive. The minute. Would you please stop this so we can square back up, go to fisticuffs, and I can get my offense going? The round was scored correctly. That's what I'm attempting to share with you. So what do you want to do? I do not know if Jose is going to fight again. It is not my role to discuss this. I think there's a wonderful fight out there for him. I think it's Jose versus Dominic Cruz. I have begged, I have pleaded to get that fight. Nobody wants to give me my way. I bring it to you now more than ever because Dominic Cruz and Jose Aldo are the exact same in that. They have been to the highest point and all they want is to return. Dominic Cruz has never waked up a day in his life and thought, I want to be number four. It's just never happened. Be a great goal, be a great effort, be a great achievement by most. It's not how his mind works, but Jose's the same. And Jose's made that clear. Made that really one last run. Changing my life, changing my physiology, 135 pounds. Anybody you got, bring them on. I'm going to clear them out. One last crack. So what do you do when that path is now murky? It simply isn't going to happen. What do you do? All options on the table, you, of course, are going to have to consider retirement. I mean, it's a very hard story. Jose didn't do that, but he, he did do something tonight. He got on his knees. He, he had a prayer. He had a moment. He didn't say the words that I am done, but he did behave in a manner, unlike a manner that he's ever behaved after a defeat. I just bring that to you just to keep your eye on it, just to see what's going on. Before these guys ride off in the sun, everybody's got to take a deep breath. You don't want to retire in that moment. I want to be real careful. And Jose was. I respect that. Dominic Cruz was. I, I appreciate that. And maybe championships, all that matters. Maybe our goals do not change. We got laser vision and we don't see either of them again. Or they take a deep breath and realize it's another guy just like me and the fans sure want to see it. I don't know where that goes. But keep that in mind as we shift our focus to Marab. What do you want to do with him? He doesn't want to fight Aldo. He went as, I apologize, Aljo. He went as far as Aljo was in his corner. This is his brother. This is his friend. I think they were roommates. This is his training partner. I don't like that either, guys. I'm not trying to get these guys together. Marab went as far as say, please don't ask me this question anymore. It seemed very sincere. It just came very sweet. It, it seemed as though we need to give that to him. We need to give, okay, let, let's not do Aldo. There's plenty of other things. Aljo's got his hands full with TJ. 
but you still have a period of time and you got to match him up. I mean, at some point you can't ignore the guy. And I'm only bringing it to you. I was, I was disappointed in one regard and I'm being critical. I'm being critical. I'm not trying to kick guys when they're down. I found out that Jose Aldo, the greatest featherweight of all time, 11 years undefeated versus Marab, who people are discussing about being the number one contender to fight for the world championship. I found out that they were fighting tonight. I found out on Tuesday. I didn't hear it from either one of them. I didn't hear it from their managers. I didn't hear it from the coaches. I didn't even hear it from the promotion. I read about it. I got sent a lineup and I saw it. And that is problematic. You are always in everything on a curve. Whether your teachers tell you it or not, you were graded on a curve. You were judged on a curve. Who's the best looking person? Wait, wait, that's up to who's next to him. Who's the smartest person? That's all about who's next to you. Who's the best fighter? That's all about who the other fighters are. You don't have a choice. If you have a guy like Sean O'Malley who is going to command the headlines, you must play that game, period. You got a guy that's up and he's running five miles a day. Guess what? Now you got to go run five miles a day. Maybe you've been used to running three because you heard that that was the maximum. I mean, it's one of these things. You don't have a choice. And for the king of Rio, greatest ever. I fully acknowledge it. Fully. So will Volkanovski. So will everybody. Honor will acknowledge the greatest ever. For him to have a feature spot that could have retirement hedging on it, but it could also have number one contendership hedging on it. And for me, who lives in this space, to not know about it until I was accidentally sent a screenshot on a group text with guys I used to go to college with four days ago, it's a problem. It's a problem. And I don't know how Marab wants to solve it. He may not care. Some guys that don't, there's a path for them too. But when you're at the top, man, 135 is very confusing right now. You cannot deny what just happened. You cannot deny the success of Marab. You cannot deny that he showed skills absolutely everywhere and just might be the most dangerous guy. But there's always improvement. I hear him on the mic. I like him. I think he's interesting. I think he comes across as kind. Everybody wants to look like a nice guy. I believe him. Everybody wants to look like a badass. I don't buy them all. It's one of those things. I think we're getting what we're advertised to. I think we like him. I think he's a popular guy. I think he needs to know that. I think he needs to do a little bit more to self-promote and make sure he gets the spotlight that he deserves. 